Welcome back to Think Tech. Uh, I'm Jay Fidel, and this is um, um, it's uh, Steve Gutman's Garage. Okay, and it's about movies, and we're going to review a movie today. It's a very unusual movie called Unorthodox with Steve, and uh, he and I both have some interesting thoughts about this movie. We'll be right back to tell you more. Unorthodox, Steve. You know, it, it catches you because it. Uh, Orthodox doesn't necessarily stand for Jewish Orthodox. It stands for somebody who follows the rules. Um, then this movie, Unorthodox, is a word that you don't usually think of in, in the Jewish context. It's, um, it's, it's somebody who doesn't follow the rules. But the movie catches you, doesn't it, Steve? Oh, it does. I mean, and the, the lead character grew up totally in a, in a very Orthodox situation. Um, the very orthodox c c community, um, and it really kind of emphasizes too. There's orthodox and there's orthodox, and this this is a uh, an extreme version, the Satmar the community that's, that exists primarily, I think, in in uh, Williamsburg area of New York City, um, and it's 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 fascinating to to see this story unfold as she rebels from her her total upbringing. And it's based on a true story. To the extent they're, they're in Williamsburg, it's apparently pretty, pretty close. I, I've not read the, the memoir, um, but the, 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 the scenes that take place in, in, in Williamsburg, I, I'm, I've, I read pretty much track uh, Deborah's own upbringing and, and her life. Uh, she was 17 when she got married in the movie. She's 19. But, you know, the, the differences are, are, are really minor. But what happens in Berlin is 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 totally fiction. Um, Deborah was someone who ended up getting a, a a scholarship to Sarah Lawrence in writing in the movie. Um, at, at Essie, the uh, the lead character ends up with, with a well, it hints at a music scholarship. They really don't say for a fact that that she she got the scholarship that she was applying for. Uh, though it certainly implies that that's, that she did. So, but but there's overlap even in the Berlin part, even though that's fiction. Um, De Deborah's family well, was from Germany, um, and apparently, as later on in life, after she she finished with the scholarship and and had the son and so forth, she apparently now lives in Berlin. I read, so. It's it's a it's an interesting combination. Hmm. Uh, it's it's a it's a Netflix series. It's four episodes, um, and it it kind of goes with especially with the opening two episodes with a lot of flashbacks going forward and back in time. Which that was one of the one of the one of the, the few minuses for me was there there was quite a bit of, of flashbacks and keeping track of the time sequence. You know, so the, this actress who uh, I wouldn't call her pretty at all, uh, Shira Haas is um, Esti. She's uh, Israeli, and uh, she obviously can speak Yiddish and Hebrew and and English. Um, and uh, you know, you 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 see her as somebody who really has no physical appeal, um, and for that matter. Uh, you know, you, you mentioned the possibility of a music scholarship. There's one point where she's talking to, I think, her grandmother on the phone um, from Berlin, and she's saying, you know, I don't have an education. I have no skills. I have no expertise. And I'm really, you know, a, a lost, lost soul. Um, and she's very upset about that. Uh, so at least in, in the movie, um, she all she has is her, her need, her wish to get out of Williamsburg and to go somewhere else. It's very ironic that she goes to Germany. And there's, there's a, I think there's a big point on that. Germany was, you know, the venue for the Holocaust. Uh, Germany was uh, where Jews were not welcome at all uh, for 100 years at least. And, um, and now she goes to Germany. She makes that choice of going to Germany, and she is welcomed in Germany. She runs into people, you know, almost by accident who like her, and 
take her into their their little group. Musicians. Ah, musicians. Ah, the connection isn't there. Musicians. <laughs> well, it's also that her, her her mother is living in 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 Germany, and and the mother um, got kicked out of the community uh, because she's gay, and 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 she she last saw her mother when when she's somewhere around three. I think that is the backstory. Um, in, in in that you learn actually in in the in the last episode how they the the two got separated uh and actually as actually was 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 taught was told she was abandoned by her by her mother and and the mother says and then the last episode no i i you basically were just taken away from me and i had no ability to to connect up with you um but i always kept track of, of what was happening with you and and the mother actually was at the at the wedding um when and was told to 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 it was to us to us yeah was told to leave and was actually walked out by by the by the grandmother who 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 uh is 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 who had actually raised who was ray raised her and the grandmother is a holocaust survivor so you got just a whole lot of underlying storylines that are going on in in these episodes of the film. Yeah, the major the major story though is that uh, as a um, uh, as a Jewish woman in an Orthodox community, it isn't easy. Um, the marriage was arranged. The husband was uh, you know insensitive. Um, he said something like. Uh, we, you, you are here to give me a family, uh, whether you like it or not. This is not so good, um, and and she doesn't really have a life with them. She has to follow all the rules. She has to be orthodox, and then that means follow all the rules. And there are so many rules, and so you see her break away. You see her walk out the door. She has to kind of sneak her, her, her traveling gear <laughs> out the door. <clears throat> and make for the airport and and go to Berlin of all places and and what I you know I find interesting is that there's courage there. She is not really equipped to do anything courageous, but she does. And there's there's a lesson about how you know sometimes people find themselves locked up, locked in a situation that is really not what they want. And they have to dig deep. They have to find the courage. And this character. Uh, although she doesn't, you know, wouldn't strike you as somebody courageous, she is absolutely courageous. She breaks away, uh, knowing that that community will completely reject her and think ill of her for the rest of her life. Yeah, and, and the, the fact that they went after her it was only because it turned out that that she had gotten pregnant, um, and once once they found out that she was pregnant, they they wanted a repeat, really. Uh, of yeah, it's his own own personal story. They wanted the kid to to be part of, of the community. It's it's not at all friendly storyline to to the Sadmar community, um, and it really it it's it's well you know, there, there's there's you know some of this underlying story about the treatment of women. It almost reminds you of the the old Barbara Streisand movie Iento, um, in which she pretends to be a man and. Because she has this drive to to learn the Talmud, and in a very traditional Orthodox uh, family, the, the women are are not allowed to to even read, let alone read the Talmud. That's that's totally a male thing. Um, it's uh, um, it's actually for somebody who did not grow up in an Orthodox community, the 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 the, the, the sexism of of that community is is just uh just amazing and this show really emphasizes it well it reminds me of the women in afghanistan you know you, you, they, they don't get educated they um their families are very hard on them they're supposed to stay in the kitchen in the bedroom all day um and you know they don't have a life and there's a there's a clear comparison it's a middle eastern concept you know um and it, it stays with these orthodox communities for you know a long time and these communities have been practicing it that way for hundreds of years, maybe thousands. 
uh, and even living in a liberal city like New York, um, they are they are completely opposite from the emancipated woman right across the street. And you can see the pressure that comes from living in a liberal city like New York on a community like this where the women the women are um, oppressed. Um, and and you can see that uh, a woman like Esty um, would 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 say, "I've got to get out of here. This is no life for me." She she wasn't educated. She she wasn't strong willed, but it was a matter of survival for her. She wasn't going to stick around. Um, everything that happened w- was an oppression on her. Every meeting, every every meal, every uh, ceremony, it was an oppression on her. And she was, you know, just a uh, an ordinary woman drawn into the Orthodox community by birth and so forth. Uh, I, I, I gave her credit for that. Um, I, I, and I gave her credit for this one extraordinary moment where she was with her German friends, the musician, and they went swimming. <clears throat> they were liberated people. And, and they weren't anti-Semitic in any way. No. Like, just the contrary. And it's another storyline about how, you know, the Germans, this generation of Germans is not anti-Semitic in any way. There are no. those in Germany who are, but this generation, as represented in the movie, uh, were very good and kind and, and loving to her. So they all go swimming, and she decides she's going to go swimming with them and with some hesitancy. And uh, she gets in the water of this lake, I guess, uh, somewhere in Berlin. And... Um, and all of a sudden, she takes off her her, her shtidl, the wig, the wig for Jewish uh, Orthodox women, and and she throws it in the water. It's like a reverse baptism, you know. She and then she she slides under the water. She floats on her back. She looks at the sky, and she is emancipated from the bondage that she's had for all of her life, her young life. Um, at that point, because she takes off the wig and jumps in the water, it's a it's a baptism, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, at that point, she she really has liberated herself, and it at at the, at the latter part of of of, of the the movie, when when the husband comes to, comes to Tuberlin and actually is willing and does cut off some of his hair to try to get her back to show that that he is willing to make sacrifices. In order to, to keep her, at that point, too much has happened with her, and and she has at that point says, "No, uh, I'm going to go on with 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 my life." And and uh, you know, it, it's 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 a very different upbringing. But it's interesting, right? The you know, the very first time she meets him, because it is an arranged marriage, she tells him he's different, that she's different, and and he he says that that's that's okay. Um, and apparently that conversation actually happened with with Deborah, who's who's this story is based upon, but it it truly wasn't. And the suppression that 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 Ed Essie is 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 is, is, is has to go through 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 this whole process, it's coming as much from the on the, the mother, the from the female side, um as you know, not not really from the males that the those females staying within the system are are at that point so indoctrinated with the with with what is appropriate behavior. Um, it's it's uh, it's 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 a little sad in these modern times, though it seems to work for them. But even the the girlfriends, um, you know, the fact that she doesn't get pregnant right away and. Nine months in, in into um, the marriage, and she's still not 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 pregnant. And the other women who got married at the same time period are are already starting to produce kids. Um, there's commentary among them about her. Uh, I mean, tremendous tremendous social pressure. Well, it's, it it really is a statement of how those people live, and and uh, they're still you no. Know, Strong community in Williamsburg and elsewhere in the world. And you really have to wonder that two things come out at me about that. Number one is why in the world are they holding on to these orthodox, uh, you know, rules and obligations this way? Why are they oppressing women 
uh, their women this way. Um, it, it's 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 caught in a time warp, um, and I guess it has. I mean, if you if there was one of them with us right now on the show, which we could we could arrange sometime, um, and you were asked why are you doing this, the answer would probably be because this is how we have survived. This is the true Judaism, um, <clears throat> and we have to keep on doing this. We we can't uh, succumb to the modern world. We have to live in the Judaism that works for us. And it's very hard to do that. They follow all the rules. And, and if you don't follow the rules, you get disowned. They say the prayer, the prayer for the dead for you. Um, you are right. completely, completely rejected as, as having left, left the fold, left the faith. Yeah. And I find it interesting that she, she yes, she's drawn back to her arranged husband. She could have a life with him, um, but she's strong enough by that time. She's had enough experience uh, in dealing with the issue that she can say no. You really wonder, you know, whether she will have the strength to do to do that to say no. But she she has the strength, and so you realize this. this she must the, the actress must weigh less than a hundred pounds. Um, oh, she's tiny. tiny. Yeah, tiny with the bald head. You can see in the picture. And that doesn't show the Scheidel. When she wore the Scheidel, the early part of the movie, you know, she looked like an ordinary person. But when you took off the Scheidel and then you have this dripping wet 90 pound actress, it's it's really something. And then out of her comes these great truths, this great courage. The other part that I get out of it is why is a movie like this? It's not the only one. There are there have been a number of movies about women escaping the Orthodox community in New York and elsewhere. Um, and uh, there's, there's a storyline there that, is, that has been covered in many movies. Why is it so interesting? Why, why does it catch us the way it does? It's not, it's not because we're Jewish or we appreciate that. It's that this is, um, I don't know. I don't know why this story is so interesting. Um, and maybe it's because we weren't, we, the community, the larger community, we weren't aware how these women were locked up this way. Um, and, and it's, it's a, it's a conflict. It's a, it's a, um, it's, it's hard to understand, uh, why this could exist in the 20th and 21st centuries. And we want to know, we want to see how this works because it has not been, you know, in, in the public conversation. Now, now it is getting in a public conversation. And you wonder from the various movies that have been made about the same subject, the same phenomenon, um, whether women are leaving this community in droves. That's what it sounds like to me. Well, one thing is, is to keep in mind is that there's Orthodox and then there's Orthodox. Um, not, not all Orthodox go to the, the extreme that the Sodmar community does. And the um, people that you will find in Hawaii that are Orthodox, um, the, the, they, they're not living quite the, the lifestyle that you're seeing in, the, in Williamsburg. Um, partly it's a matter of numbers. Um, you really couldn't, could not sustain that type of a lifestyle in, in Hawaii or in 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 most of the of the United States, you really need a fairly substantial part of the population. I, I've read that the Hasidic um, percentage of, of the percentage that are of Jews who are Hasidic is is approximately five percent. So it's it's really a, a minority um, within a minority community of Jews. So, but it's. Um, but it's something that you know you either get get fully indoctrinated in at a, at a young age and are able and 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 just simply are able to block out everything else that that's occurring because you really are a a manufacturer of, of babies um, is the way this film produces it presents it and there appears to be a lot of truth in it. And the men are also locked in. <clears throat> uh, they they collaborate with other uh, orthodox men uh, for certain industries 
uh, in New York. I, I maybe it's different elsewhere, but they're uh, they're in um, cameras. Jewelry. Uh, uh, sorry. Jewelry. Jewelry, right? And forty. Yeah. Street. The whole the movie jewelry, and that's that's and that's a large part of uh, of it. Um, yeah. So and they and they they only work with other Orthodox people, um, men. And they and they have businesses with them, and um, they don't they don't really get out of that. It 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 covers their lives in a parallel fashion. You know, the the women have their role, the men have their role, but both of them are within this community, and they have to follow the rules. Their life and their life experience is governed by the rules, um, which is uh, right. very interesting. And and you know, it seems to me that. You say that there are orthodox and there are orthodox, but but the reality is there's always a community of some kind. I shouldn't say always, but many times it's a community of some kind. They may not be religious, they may not even be Jewish, but the parents will want to control what the child does, and the child has to, if the child wants to live his or her own life, um, he or she has to break out. and. You know that this this breakout notion, this breakout. I, I'm sorry. I appreciate you know what you want me to do and be and how you want me to live, but I got to go now. And and that's you know an underlying theme. This was a an the ultimate you know exaggeration of that theme, but it happens often. It happens in um, you know in religious communities and cultural communities, uh, and maybe in some ways it's good because it, it lends structure. It lends familial development. It, it it means that you live together, eat together, care care about each other. There's a benefit there somewhere. If you don't have the family, you know, then it's it's tougher on on the individual child. Well, remember, we I mean, you look back at at what were the various societies when when Judaism came into being, and how many of those societies are still around um, today. I mean, so there is something to to be said for it. Um, you know, we're, we're one, one of the very few that you look at, you know, who's talked about in the, in the Old Testament, those communities just aren't there anymore. How many, how many Phoenicians do you run into? Uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, there's something to be said for it, but, but this is the, you know, the only point I, I was just simply making is this is the ultra, ultra orthodox that we're dealing with. Um, they, you know, the, the, the uh, not, not all the Orthodox are, 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 are quite at, at the, at the, at the level. Um, though the, the, the wedding ceremony, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you ever went to an Orthodox wedding, Jay, um, but it's what they portray in the movie is, 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 is pretty accurate. I mean, the, the men are dancing in one, on one side. Of, of the floor and the women are at the other side and there's actually a curtain in between um so they don't accidentally run into each other i mean come on in in in, in the 21st century i mean that's how we're still doing it but that is the way they do it well in an orthodox uh, temple i'm sure you've seen the women pray <laughs> in one side of the temple yes behind a, a barrier and the men are in the other side of the temple um, and they don't get near the women, um, they, and they are in charge. Um, you know, I find that really interesting. And then, of course, an Orthodox man is never going to shake the hand of a woman. Um, the, right. Touch, touching is not permitted. And if if you're um, you know not Jewish and you reach out to shake the hand of an Orthodox woman, the woman will not shake your hand and will, will uh, stand stand far away from you. Because they're not supposed to, you know, suggest that anybody but their husband is in charge. And what is interesting and remarkable, and I'm sure uh, in this community they were they were doing this, is that sex itself is not a touching, even with your husband. Um, the, and there's a there's always a, a a barrier, a sheet, for example, between the two uh, sexual partners uh, with with a hole cut in it. Uh, yeah, for the that's in the movie partner. too. It, yeah, it's really, it's really extraordinary that yes, they they are baby makers. The women have their role as baby makers, but 
you know, they can't touch their husbands. Uh, I, f I find that really uh, ancient, ancient tradition and of, of no particular use. And the question I put to you is, this is movie telling us that the Satmar, you know, ultra-Orthodox community in New York is surviving, uh, changing. I don't think you saw much change here. Um, uh, will it disappear over time but because people like Etsy are compelled to leave? What's the long, the long throw on this? What is it telling us about this very tough community? Um, are, are they going to survive? Um, and maybe it's saying, yeah, they'll survive. She can leave if she wants. We'll say the prayer for the dead for her and we'll never speak of her again. She's out of the fold, but we will survive because that's how strong our, our culture is. I think so. I think that they, they have so far, and they produce enough babies, quite frankly, that if, if they lose, you know, the, if the average woman is making somewhere between five and ten babies, and they lose, lose one uh, of the women each time, that's still an awful lot of people. Um, it's still a fairly good-sized community that still goes on. And there's no, as far as I know, there's no indication that the numbers are going down. I, it's not, it's not growing. I don't think anybody from the outside co comes in. Um, I mean, you're not, you're not going to have a processizing um, occurring with with that that kind of attitude. But but it, you know, it, it does it does stay strong within itself. You have to you have to um, uh, give credit to the filmmakers here because they they penetrated into a community that probably didn't want to talk that much about their their cultural traditions. Uh, I don't know how they handled that. Uh, they must have been Jewish, maybe even Orthodox Jewish, to make this movie and to have access, for example, to those meals and rituals. Uh, what and they were real people in those meals and rituals. They were really practicing this. Uh, and and how do you get inside that wedding? How do you get inside a, a Sabbath table? How do you recreate the conversations they were having with, <laughs> with poor Etsy, who was always so uncomfortable? Um, how did they convince people to participate in this movie? Well, I, I don't know that they actually got people from that community. I seriously doubt that they got any cooperation within that community. But that goes back to my point about the fact there's Orthodox and there's Orthodox. I think they were able to, to get enough people who have an Orthodox upbringing um, who are now interacting with, with a modern society, and but still keeping to some of the fundamental core beliefs structure and are then very comfortable with 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 doing the performances that they did um but it's it's yeah that, that community does not reach out um the director actually won an emmy for the uh the for, for, for this series um for you know a, a series based on on limited episodes um I always get surprised as to how many different Emmys there are in different categories they have. But it was nominated for eight different Emmys and won one. And it 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 certainly deserved um the, the praise that that it, it gets by winning so many Emmy nominations. It's interesting that she, Etsy, was the center of the movie of the show. Oh, very much so. And uh she's uh she was very intense. Um as I said before, not not physically pretty or anything, um, and she did not have presence on the screen, uh, the way she walked and talked and related to people. But somehow, um, she was well directed. Somehow, you got to know her and sympathize with her and and yes. be with her. Uh, and I guess that's the story of good acting. It's not so much a physical experience. It's a it's the whole ball of wax. It's 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 the package. And her package was compelling in this movie. You had to know what happened. Yeah, there, there was an inner strength that, that, that came across. Um, I mean, she sells her jewelry in order to, to raise the funds to, to leave the community, um, which is also what, what, what Deborah did um, in order for, for her to leave. And 
it's it's uh um yeah i i think the acting performance was, was superb there was the only character that no that i really didn't think um was realistic was was moishi the uh kind of the enforcer for the community he was a little bit too over the top um yeah i i, I really didn't didn't uh i didn't really find him believable um, yeah uh, and i didn't know what there, there was a scene where he takes his clothes off and jumps into the water I mean, it was almost like he was going to commit suicide, he would drown himself or something, uh, because he was feeling guilty about going out and gambling and having touched women that 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 were not Jewish and not not his wife. Um, but but yet uh, that that's not what happened. Um, yeah, that particular character is just, um, I I I I think that was almost a distraction. Yeah, but well, the, the, the husband came across real very realistic. Yes. Yes. He was just trying to do the right thing. He was caught in this. He yeah. had to try to get her back. Uh, he had to go through the baby mill thing. Uh, he had to follow the rules. And he was lost in that. Even if he cut off his hair, uh, that didn't change it. He was still weak. He was weak. And, and the individual man in this community has got to follow the rule, but he's not strong. He's strong only in the group. Uh, the, and the comparison between him and Etsy was stark, even though he, you know, he had greater physical presence. Uh, he had more moral courage. So I, I don't know why this movie attracts me so much. I think it's because it, it tells a story that isn't often told, although there have been other movies about people trying to enter the fold, uh, trying to marry, you know, women who come from the Orthodox community and women running away from the Orthodox community. I don't think I've seen that many, although I think I've seen some about men running away from the Orthodox community. Um, but I guess, you know, I guess what it is, is that's part, if you build a wall around the community, you have to expect this. You have to expect people to leave because they can't stand it, um, both men and women. You have to expect people will entertain relationships uh, with with non-Jews or non-ultra-Orthodox Jews from outside. So we're talking about a kind of membrane where, you know, it, it, people have to cross through that membrane. It's part of the existence of this ultra-Orthodox community, and we don't get a chance to look into it. We don't get a chance to study the membrane, except in a, in a very good movie like this. Well, remember, the original community developed because of the fact that it was danger for any Jew to walk outside the community and 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 interact with with the greater community you know you go back into to europe and um and 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 the anti-semitism that that just simply reeked throughout the many, many societies the many pogroms that, that occurred um it was dangerous to be uh going outside your community so the fact that the the walls got developed and and this structure occurred um you can you could see how historically it happened it's just how do you keep doing it in the 21st century so um yeah so well, well, I, I think you'll give this one a high a high number for for rating it right well let me ask you first what would you rate it at well because of things like moishi and i was a little bit in the, those first couple of episodes with the flashbacks, I found it a little bit confusing. I, I give it a nine. Um, okay, uh, I would give it slightly higher. I was thinking a nine, a nine and a half, and it, and and it's it's because it's a story that I didn't really know about, and the movie taught me a lot. The movie taught teaches me a lot that I would uh, tend to give it a high mark. And those are the kind of movies I I like. I want to. I want to find a movie that teaches me something. Yeah, it certainly left 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 you with a lot of things to think about when you get done with it. Um, yeah, I'm glad you recommended that, that I, I go watch it. Thank you. We'll find another one. Uh, we'll find another one that teaches us something. Uh, I think so. Takes us through, you know, an experience that we don't we don't have in our lives. You know, watching Netflix, watching Prime, going to the movies in general. I know you do that too. Um, it's 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 a way of getting out 
especially in the time of COVID, especially in the time when travel is a little more difficult than it used to be. Um, this is the way you extend your life and your thinking and your emotional experience. It's really important that we have this. Uh, I mean, if, if one day the power went out or the, or the broadband went out and we didn't have movies, I, I, would, I would be very unhappy that I didn't have this <laughs> stimulation from a movie like this one. You know? Right. Absolutely. It's yeah. not the same as reading the book. Not the same. <laughs> and they're getting better and better. You know, yes. I, I don't know who exactly made it, you know, physically who the who the, um, the directors were and all that. But I, it, it strikes me that every time you see a movie, especially in the last two or three years with COVID, these young people are making movies that are really high value, high quality movies. Um, you know, the color and the creativity and the and the camera shots and the sound and the music. I mean, I mean, it's it's so much better than the movies we saw in, a, in you and me in the fifties and sixties and seventies. Right. Uh, they are they are absolutely wonderful, and it, you know, it's a, it's the technology, but it's also the art. And we we are happy. I'm happy that I'm alive right now that I can enjoy this. Here, 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 here. Thanks okay, very Steve. much. We'll, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. We'll find another one, uh, hopefully of equal value and and uh, entertainment, and uh, we'll compare notes and, and find uh, what we can learn from that. Yes, uh, I think we will. Thanks very much. Thank you, Steve. Aloha. Bye. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.